Hello my lovely friends! My name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the books that I plan to read during my winter break. Okay so I have this giant tote bag full of these books because I am going home for winter break in like two days so here they are! <laughs> if you didn't know I'm a college student and so I have almost basically a whole entire month off of school and I am so ready for it, <laughs> so ready for it. Um, and so these are all the books that I'm planning on bringing to my parents' house. I stay with my parents during long break periods. Um, and so I'm taking all of these books to their house for the next month. Um, will I read all of these? No. Am I gonna try my hardest? I don't know. <laughs> but these are just books that are on my radar that I feel like I could pick up if I was in the mood for over winter break. So let's dive right on into these books. I do have three books I want to mention really fast because I just talked about them in the book haul that I posted however many videos ago. Um, there are these three books that I hauled recently that I definitely want to read as soon as possible. We have um, Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas. Uh, this is the latest book in the Ravenel series. Really want to read that. Um, we have Sweet Starfire. This is a very old 1980s romance that I found um, at Half Price Books that is also sci-fi related. So I'm interested in that. And then I definitely want to pick up this book as soon as possible, which is Dark Warrior by Donna Fletcher. And this is a romance where the heroine is being captured by this evil man and our hero ends up rescuing her. But he's masked the entire time and she doesn't know what he looks like, but she falls in love with him. I definitely want to read these three, but um, I did just talk about them really recently, so that's why I'm not going in depth on them. Okay, so there's no particular order to the rest of the books that I'm talking about. I'm just picking them out of the bag as I go. Um, first, I have Missile Text by Whitney Deneen and Melanie Summers. They sent me this book, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you so much, the authors did, um, with a bunch of other goodies, which was super sweet. Um, but this is apparently a um, holiday romance, and if I'm feeling in the mood for holiday romance, this will be available to me. This is about a heroine who becomes the personal Christmas shopper for the hero who is this big grumpy guy who doesn't want to deal with Christmas at all, but she kind of helps him get into the Christmas spirit. If I want to read a Christmas book, I can pick this one up for sure. Then I have a book that will come in from a hold on Libby very soon, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I have not read this book, no, and I've read almost every Colleen Hoover book, but this one. <laughs> um, I don't know why I just, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready for the emotional roller coaster that Colleen Hoover puts me through. Like I have to space out her books whenever I read them because I would be utterly, utterly wrecked if I binged all of her books because they are very emotional and they take, it takes a lot of, out of you to read one of her books, I feel like. So it's been almost a year since I've read one of her books. And so I need to pick up another one. I don't know anything about this, but I will read the summary. It's not exactly love at first sight for Tate Collins when she meets the tormented and secretive Miles Archer. They wouldn't even go so far as to consider themselves friends. The only thing Tate and Miles have in common is a mutual physical attraction that cannot be denied. Once their desires are out in the open, they realize they might have stumbled on the perfect no strings arrangement. What they've got could be surprisingly satisfying as long as Tate can stick to the two rules Miles has set for her. Never ask about his past and don't expect a future. They think they could handle it, but everything is different when real emotions start to change the equations. Hearts get unfiltered, promises get broken, rules get shattered, love gets ugly. Again, I feel like Colleen Hoover's just gonna wreck me with this book like she does in almost every book that I've read by her, so I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also not looking forward to it, if that makes sense. Okay, so I have not read this book yet, and I think that a lot of people are waiting on me to read this, and I'm surprised I haven't read it yet. From Bullet and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I think I'm scared because I know people who hate it and I know people who love it. And I don't wanna be one of the people who hates it. All I know about this is it's about a maiden named Poppy and I think she has a scar on her face or something. And I know something to do with vampires in here. I'm pretty sure. Um, I do own this on audio. So that's how I would be consuming it. And I need to freaking read this already because I've been trying to read it ever since I got this from my lovely friend Ashley from Ash Heart Books. And I still haven't read it yet. So I am so sorry, Ashley. And I know you love this, but I need to finally, I need to finally get to it. This is a book that was on my December TBR. We have Claimed by L. Kennedy. I'm going to be picking this up very soon. I don't know when this video is going to be posted. I might have already read it by now, but this is a post-apocalyptic romance that Riley over at Riley Marie loves. And I've never read an L. Kennedy book. So this is what I'm going to start with. I've never read The Deal or her off-campus series, whatever. But I feel like this one would be more my, my jam. Um, I'm kind of like going away from 
college romances, you know, um, but this sounds fun. This is a post-apocalyptic romance that I talked about in my December TBR, if you wanna know the full summary and all that stuff, but I am gonna take my physical copy to my parents' house so I can maybe tab it up. I also have uh, The Duke's Perfect Wife by Jennifer Ashley. This is in the um, Mackenzie's and McBride series, and I think this is the fourth book, and this is the next book that I have to read, so. I'm excited. Something funny about this is I got this book used and it has a little um, star cut out in the cover. I think that's so funny and so unique. But this is the fourth book in this historical romance series, the first one being The Madness of Lordy and Mackenzie. I just finished uh, The Medicines of Lord Cameron, which is book three. I have read book two as well. Um, and so I'm gonna probably hopefully pick this one up um, over winter break when I'm over there for a whole month. So I will have the physical copy with me if I want to tab it up. So if I have physical copies of the books I plan to bring, but also listen to, um, I will bring those because sometimes I like to read along physically while I listen. Another historical that I have uh, that sounded fun is How to Capture a Countess by Karen Hawkins. Isn't this cover so fun? Like, look, like that is so fun. I love it. You know what scene this reminds me of? This reminds me of I don't want to spoil something. I don't want to spoil if you've never seen Pirates of the Caribbean, but it reminds me about one of the ending scenes at the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, the last, like, of the trilogy, the original trilogy, obviously. This reminds me of that scene, and that's, like, one of my favorite scenes of all time, so. Urged by her favorite nephew, the intimidating Duchess of Roxburgh agrees to transform a thorny Scottish rose into a lovely bloom but even she isn't prepared for fiery Rose Balfour. At 17, Rose wildly fell in love with Lord Alton Sinclair, known as Lord Sin, for his wicked ways. Stung by his indifference, the starry-eyed girl tried to win an illicit kiss, but then panicked and pushed the notorious Raquel into a fountain, leaving Lord Sin floating among the lily pads to the mocking laughter of his peers. Rose escaped back to the obscurity of the Scottish countryside. Six years later, Sin convinces his aunt, the Duchess of Roxburgh, to invite Rose to her annual house party, where he plans to get his revenge by making Rose the laughing stock of polite society. To his astonishment, he finds she has become an alluring woman who threatens to turn the tables on his nefarious plans. Thus, Sin and Rose begin an epic battle of the sexes and become more passionate at every turn. Eventually, one will have to surrender, but to vengeance, or to love's deepest passion. That sounds so fun. They like play pranks on each other. I'm so looking forward to this. I like, I'm in the mood to finally like read a book physically. And I feel like this could be the one for me over winter break because you know me, I'm not good at physically reading at the moment. Next, I have a book that was kindly gifted to me um, during my birthday in September from Tori from Novel Life. She gifted me this little novella. This is called Love in the Library. And it's about these two people who I believe get stuck in a library and overnight or something like that. Um, but it's very short. And I picked a lot of novellas to take home because if there's a novella that I can read really fast, to upload my Goodreads goal or just to read in one sitting, I will totally do it. So this just sounds like so much fun. And yeah, a library, a love story, sounds perfect. And I also have Queen of Swords by Katie Robert. This was on my last, I think it was, I had I had this book on my summer TBR video when the last time I went to stay with my parents for a long period of time, but I do wanna read this one. This is Katie Roberts like sci-fi romance series, which I didn't even know existed until I found this at a used bookstore. But like, excuse me, this cover is very interesting. Sci-fi romance mixed with Katie Robert hopefully will be amazing because I did not even know that she wrote books in this subgenre of romance. The little blurb on the front says, Robert's Sanctify series kicks off in high gear. Readers will root for the alpha hero whose determination is easily matched by spunky, gritty Ophelia. Super fun, super excited. Next, I have The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This was gifted to me a couple Christmas ago, Christmases ago by Melissa over at She's an Open Book. So thank you so much, Melissa. I still haven't read this book yet though. I know this is a young adult book, but I have loved Trisha Levenseller's young adult books. I've read her The Pirate King series and I really liked those. And so I think this is an assassin turned lover romance where she goes to kill the king, will marry the king and then kill him, but then she falls in love with him kind of thing. Um, I don't wanna know anything about else about this cause I'm gonna go in blind. Sorry, my phone crashed. Anyway, what I was saying was, um, I know this is some people's favorite young adult book. So I can't wait to dive into this. I know the audiobook is available to me through Libby. so. Hopefully this will be a great audio listening experience for me. And I have lastly three uh, historical romances that I want to read for sure. First we have Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas. I have not read any of the, um, what series is this? Is this the Hathaways? I think this is the Hathaway series. Um, Jen got me this for Christmas last year. So thank you so much, Jen, I love you. And I know Jen adores this book because it has, um, 
one of her favorite heroes, Cam, in here, who was a little bit in the Wallflower series, so, um, but he was like kind of young in there. But I'll read the back for you. It says, when an unexpected inheritance elevates her family to the ranks of an aristocracy, Amelia Hathaway discovers that tending to her younger sisters and wayward brother was easily compared to navigating the intricacies of the ton. Even more challenging, the attraction she feels for the tall, dark, and dangerously handsome Cam Rohan. Wealthy beyond most men's dreams, Cam has tired of society's petty restrictions and longs to return to his uncivilized roots. When the delectable Amelia appeals to him for help, Help, he intends to offer her only friendship, but intentions are no match for the desire that blindsides them both. But can a man who spurns tradition be tempted into the most time-honoring arrangement, marriage? Life in London society is about to get a whole lot hotter. I know Jen loves this book, so I'm very excited to like gush with her and talk to her about this. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to read and listen to this one because I'm going to be listening to an audio hopefully. Okay, so the last two books are books in the Bride Quest series by Claire de la Croix. Um, we have, I own a couple of books actually in this series, but I've never read this series. We have uh, The Princess and The Damsel. Um, I just thought these covers were gorgeous and I hopefully will love these books. This one was written the year I was born. It was written in 1998 so I know older historicals are kind of hit or miss for some people so we'll see if I like this one. This one is the first book so I have the first book and the second book. If I like the first book I have the second one here to tide me over you know. I will wed my only one true love declared Princess Brianna despite King Henry's decree that she marry one of the sons of the man who had conquered her family's castle. So Brianna issued a seemingly impossible challenge. He who returned with a gift that made her laugh would win her hand. And thus began the bride quest of three brothers Fitzgavin. Burke and Rohan, knights both, set out at her command. Only Luke remained, refusing to indulge the whims of the glorious Irish princess, even Brianna's legendary beauty could not tempt him until she invaded his senses and his soul. But Luke thought a princess had no place in the life of a battle-weary warrior who vowed to lay down his sword forever until he was forced to take up arms to protect the fair maiden who had seized his heart by divine right. That sounds so fun. I hope I love this. Like, I do. It's gonna be sad because I own four other of her books, so. Hopefully I love this and then I can move on to book two, which is The Damsel. I'm not going to read the summary for this one because I don't want to spoil the rest of the series, but this is the pretty, this one has a step back. So that's fun. This one doesn't, unfortunately, but it's a nice surprise because I bought this not knowing there was a step back and I flipped through it and there it was. So the little blurb on here says, Proud maiden, she vowed never to love again until he rode back into her life. So cool. Ah, that's really pretty. So Hopefully I like these books and then I continue on with more of her books. I know that I've heard nobody talk about these. So if you've read these, let me know. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the physical books that I'm planning on bringing back to my parents' house. I obviously have like some journals and my Bible and stuff like that, but probably don't want to hear about that stuff. But I plan on hopefully reading these over winter break. No guarantees. I take my teacher certification exam in December to become a teacher. And so that's gonna be taking up the beginning part of my December time. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then I have other plans throughout winter break as well, but um, we'll see if I get to all these. I really wanna get to all of these because they sound super fun and super entertaining. But yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. If you're curious maybe to buddy read any with me, let me know as well. Um, I'm obviously also gonna read other books other than these during winter break. These are just like the physical books that I'm bringing. Like I have audiobooks and ebooks that I plan on reading as well, but I don't have them physically, so I'm not talking about them right now. You know, leave me any kind of winter related emoji because this is my winter break TBR. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.